Welcome to chapter 7 which is other system software and applications. We have seen so far uh, the core part of what you call a system software which is things like operating system for example. Now there are a host of other things which are associated with system software and we look at some of them simultaneously look at some of the application aspects of the system. Now one of them is networking and communication software, the other is security software and third major component we are looking at is database management solutions. The operating system provides uh, networking using TCP IP. Uh, communication software which you might notice in the dial up mode. For example, the small software which VSNL gives you that is an example of a dial up software. In case you have uh, a peer to peer networking software, uh, there are some standards available in that area. Those are examples of uh, networking software. Sometimes you might have noticed that a hardware engineer sitting at another location is able to actually capture your screen and is able to help you. That is an example of a remote desktop software which is also an example of a system software of the communications variety. Uh, there are security softwares which uh, for example many of them you are familiar with what are known as firewalls for example. Now firewall is both a hardware as well as a software. Firewall is essentially a mechanism to inspect what data comes in and prevents uh, wrongful data to enter your servers or the inside area of your systems. Antivirus solutions help you to detect software of course there are various types of antiviruses some which are more batch mode in the sense that you scan a device or a disk to check whether the software exists. The others are which are sort of online in the sense that when your machine is on the antivirus is on and if you insert for example a pen drive which contains a virus it automatically detects it and indicates that there is a threat to your machine. Proxy servers is others. So proxy servers are typically servers which run between the user and various resources on the background which is servers and such things. So it is typically a mechanism of preventing undue interaction with any of the applications which are stored behind on your servers. Intrusion detection systems are more sophisticated systems which are at the edge of your uh, uh, IT infrastructure to detect that anybody trying to intrude into your systems from the outside. So it de depends on inspection of packets of information coming in and trying to find out if there are patterns of the kind of communication happening. So if it detects that a certain machine outside on the internet is trying to continuously come in to you and he is not an authorized website which you normally interact with, the IDS actually detects that this is not an IP which is a reliable IP and it prevents your internal systems from being hacked for example by outsiders. Citrix is another example of a software which is extremely popular used by most corporates as a mechanism to ensure that applications which you have. For example if you have a online dealer application you want to ensure that only your dealers who are outside of your four walls can access that application. You need to publish that application on Citrix which is a software which acts like a interface or a facade and allows only dealers who are registered dealers to actually access that software. So we do it for example in Velinka we have our library uh, database which is to say all the books in the library and the, you can do a name search and a title search and a subject search etc. Now this facility could be also accessed from the outside. So the library system is exposed to the outside using a Citrix application platform. So those applications which are published and which are allowed access to certain category of users only they can from outside allow it. Now why do companies need it today? Increasingly you find lot of companies actually want people to work even from their homes. Now in such a case the very application for example an email or such applications which you want your employees to access from outside are published on Citrix which gives a controlled gate access to the applications in question. An extension of this could also be seen in the form of a virtualization solution. Virtualization solution is to say that the physical storage device could be anything, the physical server could be anywhere 
but you get a feeling that you have been allocated a certain server to talk to. So virtualization of desktops is also possible. For example, increasingly now you get uh, computers with no hard disks. Why it helps you to reduce costs. Suppose you have 10,000 employees and each person requires a machine on his desk. It's unaffordable to have a de uh, hardware which also have a hard disk and a pen drive and a printer, etc. So you can cut down on many of these devices and have a diskless PC, for example. Now, if you have a diskless PC, how do you get all the functionality? The functionality of a hard disk, a storage, a printer, etc., has to be managed from behind at the operating system level. So you create a sort of an operating system behind which simulates the real hard disk that you have here. So these are examples of what you call as virtualization, either of storage, either a processor, or of the entire system itself. Infrastructures are growing in most companies, and you find that uh, managing this infrastructure, for example, if somebody's machine is down, somebody's machine has a virus, somebody requires a certain application to be allocated to him, certain, somebody requires some security levels to be uh, changed for him. Now, all these are examples of managing infrastructure. Now, how do you manage that from a central place, particularly because you have 10,000 employees, a lack of employees in the company, and going physically to their desk every time and providing help to them becomes nearly impossible. For example, if somebody were to say that from Windows X version to Windows next level version is to be upgraded, or let's say my Word or my Excel has to be upgraded to the next level, imagine traveling all across to 10,000 tables of people and trying to create those upgrades. Increasingly now, it should be possible to sit at one place in your server room, issue a command so that all these latest versions can be easily downloaded onto the 10,000 servers or 10,000 desktops. Now, if this could be done, it's efficient, it is fast, it gives the users updated copies of things in an instant, making your service levels go up tremendously. And therefore, it's important to have what are known as infrastructure management solutions. These are highly centralized solutions which enable people sitting, experts sitting at the uh, help desk, as they call that, IT help desk, which can provide services to all their users without having to move physically from that place. Other types of system software perhaps include the following. The web server, as we've discussed in the context of the chapter on internet and something which publishes web pages. Uh, application servers, so a host of application servers may exist which enable the running and monitoring of applications which you have at that point of time. Transaction monitors are specific uh, softwares which are supervisory softwares which monitor the concurrency of transactions, the working of transactions. If a transaction fails, how can I roll back a transaction? Just imagine, for example, if you are doing a transaction on the ATM and for some reason the communication between the ATM and the central hub fails. Now, in such a case, what happens to the transaction? Can you roll back the transaction? Can you bring back your bank account balances as if nothing happened? Now, these are questions which a transaction monitor is able to answer for you uh, automatically. There could be other variety of software components which you may look at. For example, uh, system utilities like uh, zipping a file, for example, or let's say defragmenting a disk. Now, these are variety of softwares which are part of a suite of system software which comes along with the operating system when you buy it. The second major variety of uh, software which we talk about applications and application software, it's a class of uh, software which enables us to completely exploit the capability of the computer to our end purpose. So, and typically this could be a business purpose or it could be an educational purpose, so on and so forth. Now, it depends on what the user wishes to do and develops an application or buys an application which meets that required purpose. System software typically, however, are different in the sense that uh, they sort of integrate various devices and uh, facilities of the computer and make them fundamentally available to us but to really make use of them from your context point of view, from your business application standpoint, you need an application software which makes use of these capabilities of the system 
and exploits them to suit your business needs. Some of the categories of the application softwares that we come across typically, one is what we call as bespoke applications, which are tailor-made. Bespoke means the way you speak it. So if you asked a requirement in a specific format, give me an accounting system which does a project accounting, for example, then somebody designs an accounting package for you, which enables you to do project-based accounting. You could have package software. For example, you don't care, you know, give me a generic accounting system. So you just go to a store and buy tally that's an example of a generalized package software. Now, sometimes these packages may suit exactly your processes and your procedures. Sometimes they may not. So choosing a package carefully is very important. Otherwise, you may have to change your procedures to adjust to the vagaries of the package itself. CAN software is a variety of uh, shrink wrap software or package software, but it is limited in its functionality. It's very focused. So for example, an Excel, Microsoft Excel, for example, it does spreadsheets and it's a easy to use tool. There's no training required. There is no uh, uh, installation complexities. So you just buy it and load it and you're done with it. On the contrary, package software many a time require elaborate installation procedures. They may require customization procedures. They may require setup of various kinds. So for example, you want to create accounts in the ledger. You need to do all of that to make it work for you. Whereas in canned, it's the notion is you open a can and start, start eating out of it. So it's as simple as that. And then last but not the least, there are large software solutions, complex ones known as enterprise solutions, which engage the entire enterprise. Say, for example, you have the enterprise resource management software, ERPs, for example, or you have a supply chain software, or you have a CRM, which engages with your customer. These are all examples of what you call as enterprise solutions. Here's a landscape of systems in a large company. Uh, let's assume that this is a manufacturing plus sales kind of a organization. So you will notice that at the lowest level, there is what you call as machine automation. So it's like saying that, can I have a CNC machine, which is a control, computer controlled machine? So for example, if I'm cutting a pattern out of steel, can I not feed a program to the machine and it automatically does what's known as profile cutting? Now, this is what you call as machine automation. So you are automating one machine at a time using what's known as the CNC technology. Now, many a time this is not adequate because different machines together form a process. So for example, if I want to produce a garment, the cloth is given, the cutting is done, the stitching is done, and then finally the finishing is done and then you get the final product. Now that's known as an end-to-end -end process. Can I manage an end-to-end -end automation of the process? That is addressed by something known as pro process automation. So process automation not only controls individual machines within its control, but it also integrates the process across machines. And that's an important aspect for us. The third layer, which is quite often now becoming very popular, is known as the product lifecycle management layer which is to say right from the conceptualizing of the product to the design, to the drawings, to the release of the drawings and bill of material for manufacturing, to the subsequent revisions of these drawings and the version controls of it. All this is effectively managed by what's known as a PLM or a product lifecycle management software. Above that, which is between the middle management layer and the operating management layer, something known as ERP systems. SAP, for example, is one of the best examples of a comp uh, solution which sort of integrates the complete company, be it finance, marketing, operating, operations, and let's say uh, procurement or systems. Now, ERP therefore helps you in planning your resources effectively at an enterprise level, thereby optimizing the uh, cost to the company, op optimizing the processes within the company, and optimizing or improving the productivity of the labor force around it. It also provides uh, decision support. It allows you to take planning decisions, forecasting and such things. So these are uh, within your company, uh, intra-organizational systems as I've called them, intra because they are within. Now lo let's look at those systems which help you connect outside your organization. And I've shown here two. One is the supply chain management system 
which connects, let's say, or extends your ERP to your supplier side. So if I have taken a decision to manufacture 500 motor cars, I need to buy 500 engines, for example, and I provide an order of 500 engines on my supply chain, which could be a vendor who's manufacturing those engines, for instance. So the connectivity between my company and an external supplier is something which the supply chain system enables. On the opposite side is my engagement with the customer, which is through a system known as CRM. CRM is customer relationship management, and it helps me to interact with customers, understand their behavior better, understand their needs better, and fulfill their requirements more efficiently. So this, these are what you might want to call as extra organizational systems as opposed to intra organizational systems, which we discussed earlier. So these are beyond the boundaries of your four walls. Now there are other softwares and systems which are required in your entire gamut of uh, systems within the company. One of them could be decision support systems like I mentioned, and they could be all across the company, anywhere that you need to take a decision. For example, if I am a loan officer in a bank and you come to me for an application, I take all your details, your last income tax uh, returns and so on and so forth to judge your income levels, your business plan, for example, and how do you, what is your business model? Is it viable? What is the industry that you are working in? Is it uh, doing well, not doing well? So based on a variety of input that I get, I need to take a decision whether it's viable to give you a loan. Suppose, for example, if I were to write a software to do the same decision automatically or at least suggest possible uh, solution, whether to give loans and to how much I can give loan, etc., that could be a good example of what you might call as a decision support system. Now, this might be an example which lies in the middle management cadre because as a loan officer, as an executive in a bank, I am taking a decision to issue a loan, which is a financial uh, obligation. On the other hand, in a manufacturing situation, I could have an operating uh, decision support somewhere here. So there's a decision support system which I can design. I gave you the example of the cutting machine. Now, if I were to take a decision, what is the most optimal way to cut so that I can reduce wastage of my material? That's an example of a decision support system at the operating levels. So you could technically have decision support systems anywhere, including the top management level. For example, if you were to decide to diversify your company or expand into a particular geography, if you get market data and try and arrive at a decision as to is it worth investing in that new region or that new factory, for instance, it could provide some sort of scenario-based uh, decision-making possibility. One other class of systems which you quite often find are known as the executive information systems. These are systems which are largely based on internal ERP data, but they allow top management to look at the data in a flexible manner, look at multiple dimensions. How can I look at sales versus regions? How can I look at sales versus products? How can I look at sales versus product categories? So on and so forth, or say customer segments. Now this flexible way and graphical way of representation is very typical of uh, executive information systems. But to make executive information systems work for you, it is essential that you have a base ERP which first has centralized data available across your enterprise. And that's a vital prerequisite for it. So this in short is what you might call as the landscape of systems in an organization. And with that, I come to the end of chapter seven, which is other systems and applications. Thank you for joining with me.